the class today, I'm going to uh, give a summary about week four, which was about lump system and consideration for the effect of time when we have a uh, cooling or heating happening. And we started this topic by considering uh, the, our famous potato when we have initial temperature of Ti, and when we put it inside the fluid, cooler or hotter, depends on the, the, temp the temperature, it is going to heat up or cool, up, cool down. And uh, to investigate that, we need to solve the heat transfer uh, as time passes, and the heat transfer is because of the convection. When we solve that equation, uh, this differential equation, we reach to uh, this, uh, this formula, which gives us time or the temperature. So it depends on if we are looking for the time or for the specific temperature. After some time, we can calculate that one. And this is based on the lump system assumption. And if you remember, lump system assumption was we need we consider the temperature inside the material we have is uniform. So we can have a one temperature representative for that object. And then to simplify this equation, we define D time constant or uh, thermal time constant, and the unit was one per second. Why? Because if you check here in this formula, it's B times T. So B should be uh, one over second when we multiply by the time, it's going to be uniform. Okay, the second important point we needed to remember about this is heating and cooling process is exponential process, as you can see here in this formula. So in these two graphs, you can see we have a heating operation happening at the beginning very fast and then very slow for the second stage. Or for the cooling similar, very fast at the beginning, very slow later. So when you're doing your studies, your research, your project, and if you find a few points like this, do not connect them as a line. You should know the cooling operation is exponential. And even if it doesn't seem exponential because the time um, spent is, is short, still you need to consider as exponential formula. Okay. Then uh, we investigated a little bit what is the time, uh, time constant. And we found if the time constant was larger, this cooling or heating operation happens much faster. We, we are going to have a, a sharper decrease at the beginning. So that will be a little bit faster. And uh, the next question was how we can consider if we can have lump system assumption or not. So we defined view number, which was uh, H, convective coefficient, times characteristic length, divided by K. Which K? K for the solid, so I put S there. So uh, when view number is less than one, we can consider we have lump capacitance uh, justified. Usually, to make sure it's, uh, it's small enough, we consider if, uh, if view number was less than 0.1, uh, it is a... Um, the lump system uh, condition is available. Okay, so this characteristic length inside the view number formula is going to be uh, calculated uh, when we have different geometries. You can uh, divide uh, your volume by uh, surface area to get that characteristic, characteristic length, as you can see here. Volume divided by surface area, which we have that cooling operation happening here. So if you do for cylinder, it's going to be R divided by 2. If you do for sphere, R divided by 3. For wall, with thickness of L, L divided by 2. Be careful. Usually, we, at, we, when we draw our wall, we put our uh, x-axis at the center of the wall. And half of the wall is L thickness. The other half is L thickness. So the overall thickness of the wall is going to be 2L. So characteristic length for the wall with the thickness of 2L is going to be L. Many students, they forget about this point, and, and they consider when the thickness is, uh, we always have a half a thickness, but you need to make sure uh, what is the thickness of the wall. Okay. Then we, we, we start considering what happens if the number was bigger than 0.1. So if it's bigger than 0.1, we need to solve this differential equation. As you can see, we have time and position. By solving that differential equation, depends on the geometry. You remember we have two, three main geometries, wall, cylinder, and sphere. And for those three geometries, we can extract these formulas. As you can see, these are series, and, uh, and it's a little bit difficult to solve. So uh, we can have a little bit of uh, approximation and reduce the amount of work we need by checking our Fourier number. Fourier number is defined as alpha times time divided by L squared, or characteristic length, length squared. Sometimes we call it tau, sometimes we call it fo, same thing. So basically, Fourier number is the dimensionless time. So if Fourier number was bigger than 0.2, instead of using this uh, uh, series, you can just consider the first term. So we consider the only first term, and it is going to be good approximation. If it's wall, if it's cylinder, this one, if it's sphere, this one. If the question or the problem you have talks about the temperature at the center of the geometry, so if it's, for example, uh, a sphere, if I'm looking at the temperature at the center, what I would do, I put my x-axis at the center, so 
x is going to be equal to 0. So all these formulas, x equal 0, so it's going to help us a lot and reduce these formulas to these simple forms. But of course, you need to be careful. If Fourier number was larger than 0.2, you can use first term approximation. And if the question asks for the temperature at the center, you can even further simplify these equations and get the uh, results. And to solve these equations, you need to have A1 and lambda 1. Let me show you in our uh, summer, in our uh, lecture notes how we can get A1 and lambda 1. As you can see, you need to find first bio number. And based on the bio number and different geometries, you can select your uh, A1 and lambda 1. Okay, there is an important point here because uh, uh, we, we are using this table. You need to go back to the definition of the table and see what they are asking for. Here, you can see bio number formula for cylinder is H r divided by k for the wall with thickness of 2l is this this is similar to the view number we already defined but not this one so you need to be careful which view number to use even for these formulas the view number defined here is based on these formulas here so you always need to follow the instruction given by the uh, those formulas to be able to find and uh, uh, we can extract a few more formulas uh, if you want to see what is the maximum heat transfer and uh, and uh, you can see for plane walls, lender, and sphere, those formula here. And uh, if you had a, a semi-infinite wall, which I, I remember I told you, that uh, semi-infinite walls, they are very long walls, or if the time passed was very short, we can consider some of the walls as a semi-infinite wall. And, and if you want to see the temperature penetration, uh, you can calculate using this formula. And this is uh, error function, and this is complementary error function, which is one minus error function. And for different... Uh, Boundary conditions, these are these equations are given case one, case two, case three, and case four. Okay, I think this is enough for this week and see you uh, next time. <laughs>